You're listening to Brandon Sports Talk, interviewing professional athletes and Paralympians and Olympians. And now for your professional athlete interview and your host, Brandon P. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege of interviewing the Fresco Fighters indoor football wide receiver, Faze McClurge. How are you doing today? Man, I'm doing great, man. Thank you for having me. I have an honor of sitting and talking with you, man. You've been doing some big things. Thank you. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to become a professional football player? Yeah, man. Um, since I was a little kid, um, that's just all I wanted to do. All I did was play sports when I was growing up, man. Like we lived, I literally lived right across the street from my elementary school and there was a huge parking lot. So all we did, all the kids in the neighborhood, we just played on that parking lot. We played tackle football, baseball, kickball, everything, man. So um, from a little kid, I knew that's what I wanted to do. And I, we even had one of those things in art class where it was like, okay, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I drew out a football and I said, I want to play in the NFL and be the best player ever. You know what I mean? So, um, man, I just knew like that energy of being on the field. I, I knew I would always love it. And I still do to this day. Of course. What was that experience like for you going to play college football and going to Cornell and then transferring to Indiana State? Um, yeah, it was amazing, man. I think it was a big decision for me because I'm um, originally I had a few D1 offers and early I had committed to North Dakota State University. Um, a lot of people don't know that, but I was like, I was a bison through and through, you know what I mean? But all the way up until like the last second of signing day, I made that switch and I decommitted from there and decided to go the Ivy League route. Um, a lot of people were shocked at that decision because, you know, North Dakota State, they're a powerhouse. They win a championship every year in the FCS. So um, a lot of people didn't like that decision. I got a little hate for that decision, but um, it was all about, you know what I'm saying, setting myself up for the future, being able to get the best education ever, but also being able to get opportunity to play um, and get to the next level. That was always my goal. So um, it was amazing. Cornell University, the people are amazing. Connections are amazing. The team was amazing. And then um, during that COVID period, 2020, a lot happened in the Ivy League were the first people to shut down. So um, that's when I ended up graduating early from Cornell, playing three years there, and then grad transferred over to Indiana State to play my final season under Coach Kurt Mallory. Of course, what was that experience like for you playing in the Ivy League and Cornell and playing against teams like Dartmouth and Harvard? Yeah, no, it was um, it, it was amazing, man. I think um, a lot of people don't know about like the rivalries, like in like football or in sports in general. But I think the Ivy League, it's it's big, right? It's one of the biggest rivalries, I believe, in college football. And I say that proudly, like going against Harvard, going against Yale, Columbia, all these schools, like, and we only play 10 games, Brandon. So I was like, we only play 10 games, really, we don't get playoffs. So every game is a playoff game. So when we play Harvard or Yale or Princeton, you know what I'm saying? We're going hard. Like a bunch of trash talking, a bunch of, you know what I'm saying, fights and like a bunch of stuff is going on. So um, it's definitely like high level, like division one football. And I definitely, um, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was great having those experiences, especially especially being on my side with the team and the people that I was with. What was that feeling like for you to get to represent two schools and getting to put on both football jerseys? Um, you're talking about Cornell and Indiana State? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it was amazing, man. I think um, a lot of people are not able to do that. And I think just um, transferring is definitely hard. Like to all my people out there, if you can stay with one school, you know what I mean? You can go there and work hard and get on the field, do that. Because transferring is not for everybody. 
I'll tell you that right now. But um, I was able to do it successfully, even with some struggles that I had, even beginning at Indiana State. Man, it, it was a beautiful feeling to be able to get on that field and be a starter at both Cornell and at Indiana State as well. Of course, what were some of your accomplishments in college playing? Um, so my accomplished, I, I think it was, I want to say 2018 and 19, I got like the field still pre-season, um, all conference, all Ivy, um, I think two years. And then I was also the team's rookie of the year, my first year there. Um, I star started at corner. And then I also got a um, big play award. I believe that was 2019. If I'm not mis mistaken, 2019, I got the big play award at wide receiver. So that's two awards, one at corner and one at wide receiver. And then at um, Indiana State, man, I just had um, a great season like with those guys. No like set accomplishments there, but coming in, I think I had almost 500, 600 yards, you know, man, just a lot of great things that I was able to do with that team. A great comeback win against EKU, second game of the season. Um, game winning touchdown. So just a lot of great things and great memories with those teams. Coming out of college, what was that training like preparing to make it to the professional league? And how did you know that you wanted to play in indoor football versus another football professional league? Um, it was intense. That'd be the um word that I described that whole process after, man. It was um I think a lot of people don't understand that. And for anybody that's trying to make that transition from college to the NFL, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people do and a lot of people make it, but a lot of people don't as well. So I'd say lock in and really whoever you're training with, make sure you have a good training regimen because once you get out of college, there's no coach pushing you. There's no, you're not surrounded by your brothers anymore. You're a professional. So the, if you go in there and work hard, that's on you. If you lift those weights, do the conditioning, make weight and eat right, all those things, sleep right. That's all on you at that point. Nobody's holding your hand. You don't have a team to come with you. So definitely a lot of discipline needed to take place for myself in order to be successful during that um, pre-draft process. And I never knew, like I said before, like I never knew, like growing up, I never knew I wanted to play in the arena football league. I would be like, arena football, man, what, what is that? I'm never going to play that. I'm going to the NFL. But um, just the way um, life goes, you know what I mean? The chips fall. Um, I got um, that opportunity to play in the IFL. And there's a bunch of different leagues out here. And I, for myself, um, I love to just like stay here because I'm building a foundation out here in America. So I love to have the opportunity to play in the IFL, XFL, USFL, especially as these leagues are booming now. Of course, what was that feeling like for you to sign your first professional contract with Fresno Fighting and get to play professional football? Yeah, for the Frisco Fighters, man, it was um, it was amazing. Um, I think. I didn't didn't really hit me until like I got my first game check and I'm like, okay, it wasn't like a crazy amount, but it was like, dang, okay, I actually get paid to do this now. Cause like in college, I was like, I'm just playing, okay, having fun, whatever. But it's like, no, I get a game check every time. So it was kind of surreal, you know what I'm saying? Even though it wasn't the NFL game check, but it was still um, very beneficial to see that somebody is awarding me, um, monetizing me for my talents and just for me having fun. Cause it didn't feel like work at all. Cause I loved the game of football. What was that feeling like the first time you got to suit up in your professional football jersey and get to be a professional football athlete? Yeah, so it was crazy. It was crazy, honestly, because um, um, sorry, I was shaking a screen. Um, I think the first game that I played, I think we we're away at Duke City, so in New Mexico, and um, arena football is different, man. It's um, it's like we don't even wear cleats. We have to wear turf shoes. It's a little bit smaller, so the first game was definitely an adjustment game. Um, so it's like being able to run on that turf, being able to move um, that's smaller. So I can't really always do an outside release. So it took a second for me to get used to. But after that first game jitters, man, I caught my stride. And I, I'm, from there, it's like, you know what I'm saying? I, um, I became that big play phase that I know I am. Of course, what was that feeling like getting to live out your dream of being a professional football player and playing in the IFL? Um, it was amazing. Um, it was a beautiful thing because I think, like I said, as a kid, you know what I'm saying, you always dream about playing professional football and just being able to have a crowd of people know your name and be with a bunch of guys and being paid to play, you know what I mean, and being able to take care of yourself by playing football. So even though, like I said, it's not the NFL, but it was still an opportunity to do that and giving me the opportunity to get to the NFL and get to that next level, which I will be getting to. So I think it, it was beautiful, a beautiful experience, man.
What are some similarities and differences between the indoor football versus NFL versus XFL versus CFL and stuff? Yeah, I think um the biggest difference is just like it's a different game. Um, if if you ever seen like the Kurt Warner movie, um, I forgot it's called like American Underdog or something like that. Um, the Kurt Warner movie because he played in the um in arena football league too for the iowa barnstormers one thing he says like when he gets to the um the nfl i think he's with the rams he's like man you guys are moving slower you know what i'm saying you guys are slow and i'm like yeah because arena football is fast game because we have the high motion and everything's moving a lot faster and it's smaller so it's like as a wide receiver you can't get the ball and start going left and right east and west no you got to get the ball and you got to go north and south right away so um being able to use that and understand that as quick as possible but i think for me it's also benefited me because now when i do get back outside and when i do get to the nfl i'll be moving a lot quicker than some of the guys just because I got the opportunity to play arena football. What are some of the things that you learned while playing indoor football to help you in your professional football career? Um, I think it's all about um, leadership. I think it's leadership that I learned, like regardless of where I'm at and just how important the team is. Like um, I've been watching a lot of Tom Brady during the season too and how important he talks about like being a great teammate is in order for the success of the team because how great of teammates we are and how well we gelled outside of when we're on the actual turf or whatever, that's how we became successful. So the closer I got to the guys in the locker room and I really understood their motivations and stuff like that and the openness to be able to communicate with the coaches and the quarterback, the team and everything like that, being able to communicate, no egos, put egos aside, that's the biggest thing I learned. The more effectively we can do that, the more successful we'll be. What does a typical game day look like at home for the Fresno Fighters? Um, for the Frisco Fighters, I would say typical game days, we get there a little bit early. We have the um, team meal, everything like that, team prayer, everything like that. And then for me, um, I get to just hang out around until it's like time to get warmed up and getting taped. And actually in our facility, it's pretty fun. And we have like a, um, a game, PlayStation and Xbox set up. But it's like for like the um, fans and stuff, like when they're walking by, but I know about it. So like when we break from the team here, we have to have an hour, an hour and a half before. So I always go over there and I start playing 2K because that's all they really got. It's like black top 2K. So I go and play that for a couple of hours and then I go ahead and um, start my warm up, start talking to my team about game plan and just um, preparing whatever we need to for that game. What are some of your favorite memories and moments being a wide receiver in indoor football? Yeah, as far as... Um, favorite memories I would say we were I believe it was Iowa was it Iowa it was one of the games I believe it was Iowa um but we um it was an away game um and I had three touchdowns in that game that was like one of my first away games back after an injury um because I hurt my shoulder during the season but I came back strong I had three touchdowns in that game but there was one touchdown where it was like um six seconds left in the half um, quarterback drops back, coach caught an amazing play, double corners on both sides, so double sevens. Um, I had the field seven, so like there was still like a good amount of room, and boom, 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 I hit the corner, time's running out on the clock, he just throws it, launches a deep one defender, I jump over one defender, rip it off his head, reach and dive into the end zone, clock runs out, but then that wasn't even the greatest moment. The greatest moment is that before that week, we had a bye week. And with the team, we had like a pool party with the team and we were all just dancing and having a good time. And we just did this one dance from a movie called Love Don't Cost a Thing. It's like, ah, da, 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 da. And Nick Cannon does it in the movie. And it's like, that popped into my mind when I scored that touchdown. So I threw the ball. I looked at, turned around and looked at our bench and I start doing that dance. And it's a great video. I think I have it on my Instagram. Every, the whole team just started doing the dance at the same time. And it was just a great celebration. I think that was probably one of my greatest memories from this year. So not even the touchdown, but like just that team coming together, that meshing, um, that was probably the biggest like thing that'll last with me forever. What does that home game atmosphere is like when teams like Sioux Falls, Storms and Bay Area Panthers come to home. Yeah, you just named some some of the big rivals now. So um, you know that we got that big rival energy, man, especially coming into home, um, where it's it's dangerous, man. It's a dangerous atmosphere. You know, our fans are amazing. Our season taking holders are amazing. I don't even know what event we'll have that night. We'll make it even more crazy. You know what I'm saying? We'll see towels and all a bunch of stuff going on. But the atmosphere is insane, man. Arena football, for the people that don't know, it's like a mat around 
the thing so people can sit right on the side. So people are getting smashed into the wall, all type of things, catches going over the wall into the fans. Man, so it's amazing. And definitely when those teams come, um, especially this year, and I mean, I'm definitely going to have something for them. And I know we're going to have something for them. What does it mean to you to be an indoor football player and represent Fresno Fighters? Um, For the Frisco Fighters, man, I think um, it means a lot. It means a lot just to represent um, that community of Frisco in general, because I know a lot of people in the community know us and re- recognize us because they do show up to the games. So it's it's great to be a representative of that team and especially being one of the best teams in the organization, just as far as like how we hold ourselves. We try to um, like respect everybody and give back as much as we can to the community. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so being a representation of that um, is just amazing. And I'm glad I get that opportunity to stop here um, on my journey that I continue in football and get into the NFL. It's a great stop for me just to learn and um, just spread everything that I've learned from that team moving forward. What is that like for you to get to play with some of your teammates like Bryce Crawford and even Jimmy Smith? Yeah, Bryce Crawford, Foot, Foot, and Jimmy Smith. Um, like, no, those are amazing guys, man. I think everybody on the team is, like, amazing. But those guys, particularly um, Bryce, he's, um since the first time I met him, man, he's, just like I said, a stud, a great guy, cool guy to hang around. But definitely, you know what I'm saying, he puts it down with that foot, man. Like, he doesn't play. So he's definitely locked in. He's probably – I think he is the best kicker in the IFL and would be in a lot of different leagues, too. And I know he'll get the opportunity. And Jimmy Smith, the same thing, just complete dog. But not only them, but just our entire team is full of great guys, man. Great um, attitudes, great energy. So um, I think we definitely have a solid, um, great team. Who are some of the players in the NFL that you implement your game after? Yeah, I would say um, Devontae Adams is somebody I've been watching for a long time. Keenan Allen. Those are two guys where, like, they're a little bit bigger frames, and I'm a little bit of a bigger frame wide receiver as well. So being able to um, just watch how they move within their frame is stuff that I look at a lot. So being a big receiver but moving like a um, 5'10 receiver, you know what I'm saying? So really trying to implement the speed, explosiveness, and quickness into my game. And then also, like, Mike Evans, just aggressiveness, being able to pull that into the game, go get the big jump balls, because I think that's what I kind of do. Like, I'm a deep threat but I'll beat you in the zone, man, whatever it is. So those are some guys that I implement my game after. Who are some of the influential people in your career that have shaped you into the football player you are today? Um, in my career, man, I think um, I've ran through so many, like I've had so many great coaches, so many great um, like strength coaches, mentors, and things like that. Um, I'd say one person is really my mom, though. You know what I'm saying? My mom, like, regardless of football, you know what I mean? She just formed me into the greatest person that I can be because of just listening to how she raised me, man. Like, she always preached discipline. She always preached hard work. She always preached honesty. And those are things that, you know what I'm saying, help me to become an even better um, person that I am a football player and you know what I'm saying so I think my mom would probably be my greatest inspiration and influence when it comes to um, who I am as a football player. What is that feeling like getting to meet your fans and having them ask for your autographs and photos with you? Um, it, it, It's definitely crazy because I'm like dang I'm not even at the level that I want to be at so um, it's crazy just like people, um, you going out and having a good game and everybody coming up to you like, hey, phase number five. Hey, how you doing? Can I get your autograph? I need to. So um, it's crazy, man. So um, it's definitely a surreal moment. It's definitely humbling for me to know that I'm not even where I want to be, but people still um, are attracted to me for the games that I and the catches that I make and things like that. So very, very humbling, I would say. And I'm definitely appreciative for all the people that have done that or even wanted my autograph or anything. So like I said, the Frisco fans are amazing. What is that feeling like getting to see those Frisco fans represent you and wearing your jersey? Um, It's amazing. Um, Like I said, um, I'm not where I want to be. But even though I'm not where I want to be, I'm getting the support of like so many people in Frisco right now just supporting me wearing my jersey and things like that. So it's like I said, it's humbling, you know what I mean? Because I know there's still a lot of work for me to do. And I know this is still just the beginning chapters for me, but um, just to get that support is amazing. Throughout your career so far, what have been some of your favorite memories and moments throughout your career? Um, My entire career or just with Frisco? Just with Frisco. 
Um, just with Frisco, um, I think some of the greatest memories I would feel like even outside of the field, man, I think there was a lot of workouts that we did leading up to the season where we just go find a field, get with the quarterback, TJ, and all the receivers would get together with the DBs and just do one-on-ones and work out together and things like that, man. I think just building that camaraderie, building that chemistry with TJ, LJ, Charles, Germ, Jolly, a bunch of those guys, receivers, and all the DBs, man. I think that's probably some of my greatest memories come from just – you know what I'm saying? Doing what we love together, talking a little bit of crap and learning more about each other and building that chemistry. Looking back on your career so far, what would you tell your younger self looking at what you've accomplished so far? Um, I would say don't give up. I would say don't give up. Like, cause I think that regardless of where I end up or not, you know what I mean? Just keep working hard because a lot of the things that I do in football, um, and me not giving up has led to a lot of great things and a lot of great lessons that I'm going to take into my life, into business, into my relationships, into, you know what I'm saying, my spiritual life. So um, not giving up on something that I truly love, that's probably the biggest thing. Never give up on it. And even though it does get frustrating, even though you don't get picked all the time, like I didn't get picked in the draft or anything like that, even though you don't get picked, just keep going. Don't, don't, don't be down too long because this is all just a lesson, one big lesson. And so going to make your story even greater. What advice would you give those future college football players that are looking to play NCAA football? I'm not looking to play in college. Mm -hmm. um, just looking to play in college, I would say that every year matters. You know what I mean? I think the the four years, five years, I think people think it goes by um, fat. Like, you no, know, they people think that it's just going to be there forever. You know what I'm saying? You can take your time. If I don't do it freshman year, hey, I'm going to do it junior year. If I don't do it junior year, I'm going to do it senior year. But like my junior year, I thought we were about to win the um, Ivy League championship. You know what I mean? And that didn't happen. And then COVID happened. And then I ended up leaving Cornell. So it's like, don't just wait. You know what I'm saying? Do the work now. Get on the field now. Do whatever it takes to get on the field. Um, I'd say like coaches, like the grass is not always greener on the other side. So don't be so quick to transfer, communicate with your coaches, be a good person. I think it always starts with being a good person, being able to communicate and work hard because the work will prove itself. And if you work hard enough, man, you'll get everything that you want. What advice would you give those college football players out there that are looking into the in professional football route and deciding whether to go the NFL, CFL or indoor football or even XFL? Yeah, I would say that if you really love the game, you know what I mean? Just keep working hard. Just keep working hard. Don't give up on it just because the NFL doesn't pick you because there's a lot of people that the NFL didn't pick. But after that, you know what I'm saying, they stop working out or they stop training or they stop doing because it's hard to do that because now it's you're at the point where like, I didn't get picked by the NFL. I don't know what to do and I'm not making any money. I got to support myself. I got to support my family. So it's easy to say, okay, I'm just going to go work. I can't work out. I can't do this. But no, you can. So I would say, really just lock in and stay focused on your dream. If your dream is getting to the NFL and you end up having to go CFL, XFL, IFL, whatever it is, man, just find what works best for you. Find where you can go and you can dominate. And wherever you end up, you have to dominate. You know what I'm saying? You can't go play in the IFL and have average numbers or be an average Joe because you're never going to get looked at. You're never going to go up. You can't go to the XFL and be an average Joe. You know what I mean? You won't make it long. You won't last long. So definitely set yourself apart and, um, yeah, that's probably the biggest thing. Set yourself apart wherever you're at. What advice do you give those players that are coming into the in, in, indoor football league and looking to play in indoor football? Um, I'd say don't take it for granted because um, a lot of people think it's just arena football. I can do it. It's easy. But no, there's some dogs like in this league, you know what I'm saying? And I'm a dog. So it's like you line up against me with that lackadaisical attitude, you know what I'm saying? You're going to have a long day ahead of you, you know what I mean? So um, really just don't take it for granted, man. Play hard, treat this like the next level. Dress for the job that you want, not the job you have. So come prepared every time, watch your film, do everything you would do just like you're in the NFL because this exactly is what's going to get you to that next level. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media? Yes, man. You guys can follow me at at P-H-A-Z-O underscore 29. That's at Fazo underscore 29. That's where I post just all my daily life stuff, football stuff, man. So you guys can follow me and tap in with me there. Thank you again, Fazo McClare, for your interview and best of luck in your future as a Fresco fighter. Yes, sir. No, thank you, man. You appreciate it, man. I can't wait to get back on here with you. Thank you.
You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Fazo, for your interview, and best of luck in the future. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.